Can you guess from my outfit where we're gonna be eating today? Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. I'm a bumblebee. And today we're going to be trying Jolly Bees here in the Philippines for the first time. <laughs> Magsaya si best friend Jolly Bee narito na. Hey kids, come with me. Let's play with Jolly Bee. Jolly 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 Bee Jolly 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 Jolly. So if you don't know what Jolly Bees is, it is the fast food chain of the Philippines. It's something that Filipinos are super proud of. Their specialties are fried chicken, fried chicken burgers. And here in the Philippines, you can actually get meal sets that are not available in Jollibee's outside of the country. So I'm here to try that. If you've watched me already, you know that I'm a big fan of Jollibee's. But let's see how it holds up in the motherland. Let's buzz in. You know, I'm going to be doing so many bee-related jokes. We're just going to be combing through it. Honey, you're not even ready. Thank you, Paul. One, two, one, two, three, four. Right now is the lunch rush time. I specifically chose this time because I woke up late. And I also wanted to see how many people were eating Jolly Bees for lunch. But because rice is served with Jolly Bees, it seems to be a very, very popular lunchtime spot. All the corporate workers are coming in and ordering a quick lunch before they go back to work and work like a worker bee. sheer amount of options this Jolly Bees has. It's not just the fried chicken, it's spaghetti, it's fried chicken, it's the burgers, the burger steak, which is something that doesn't exist outside of the Philippines. And the options for dessert are crazy here. I cannot wait. Hi! Are you guys students? Yes. Yeah? Do you guys eat Jolly Bees often? I guess. Yeah? How often do you eat Jolly Bees? Once a week. Once a week. Yes. And uh, are you allowed to come out of the school and order outside food when you go to school in the Philippines? Uh, yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. It must be super popular with all the students. Oh, yes. So much. Yeah. What's your favorite order? Chicken joy and spaghetti. Okay. We're definitely getting that. And what about for dessert? What's your favorite dessert? Uh, peach mango pie. I cannot wait to try. I'm buzzing with excitement. Jollibee's really do be loved. The quality of my jokes are going... Yeah. Queen B in the house! Okay, come down here. So, a little game plan before we order. I can't order everything off the menu because then I'm not going to be able to finish anything and there's going to be too much food waste. But I'm kind of going to order the signature menu of each like genre per se. A single order of Yum Burger, one crispy chicken sandwich, tuna pie. I'll get original. Jolly spaghetti, a one piece burger steak. And let's make it a meal with a Lipton iced tea. Oh, you're so fast. <laughs> Is this a hidden menu item? Oh! We unlocked the hidden menu item. Ah, we're gonna order dessert after so that we can have it fresh. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. You know the sheer amount of orders they go through every day by just how fast and efficient they are. Inside the kitchen, it's really like a beehive. Everyone is working so diligently and they are doing it with the maximum capacity and it is impressive how fast that they're working. I understand why the mascot is a jolly bee and they are all doing it with so much passion and happiness too. I don't know how they're able to put up such a big smile every time you order. Service industry at its best. Filipinos would tell me that um, there is a slight difference from the taste here from, from the Philippines and outside because I think Jollibee has adopted the taste of each country they are in. That's true. Okay, our, ready, our menu is ready, so I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Okay, our order is ready. This is buzzing like a bee. Let's go get our order. Hello! Thank you so much. Is this all for us? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Enjoy your meal. Ah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh, let's go. Oh, okay, my wrists are actually about to break. 
let's go over everything we ordered before we dive in. We got one yum burger, one crunchy chicken sandwich, one tuna pie, one spaghetti, one burger steak, one iced tea, one coke float, one kalabok, one large fried chicken, one large fries, one four piece family box with two spicy fried chicken and two chicken joy originals. And the total came out to 971 Filipino pesos, which is around this much. Let's start with the classics, yum burger. One more time. So the Yum Burger is the most classic item on the menu. So the buns are a brioche bun, and inside is a thin layer of burger steak. And the sauce they have on is a ketchup mayo mix. Simple, easy, no veggies, no pickles, no fuss. I feel like this is a Sims version of a hamburger. It's simple, it's the true essence of what a burger should be. I honestly almost like the fact that they didn't put any vegetables in. If you want a quick snack with a little bit of protein and a little bit of carbs, this is just fast and easy. I'm giving this one a 7.5 out of 10. Now let's move on to the chicken sandwich. Packaging, it says crunchy chicken setup. What I really love about Jollibee's is honestly their packaging. Does the mascot give me Uncanny Valley vibes? 100%. If I see this in the middle of the night, it's gonna freak me out. But the creepiness is honestly part of the charm. Whoa. It's like vomiting out a little bit of mayonnaise on the side. It's like a baby refusing to eat baby food. Let's check the inside. Burger buns toasted on both sides, which is always a good sign. And the sauce is like some sort of oregano parsley in it. It almost smells a little like ranch actually. There's a bit of acidity at the end, so it's not just a mayo sandwich. No pickles, again, just the fried chicken steak and two burger buns sandwich in between. Easy, simple, no fuss. Why did I think that this was filet fish Very different from all the chicken sandwiches I've tried. The patty is actually minced instead of the whole chicken. It has kind of like a texture like filet fish where the meat kind of falls apart, but it's not a bad thing. It's like having a giant McNugget as a patty. I never thought the day would come where I say I miss pickles because I am a certified cucumber hater, but because the chicken is fried and the mayonnaise is there, the acidity is nice coming from like the ranch-like dressing, but I do wish there was something a little crunchy to offset some of the like a heavier notes, uh, like a little bit of iceberg lettuce to add different layers of crunchiness would have been nice, but still a very good sandwich. I'm giving this one 7.3 out of 10. This is what I come to Jollibee's for. Look at this fried chicken. I swear Jollibee's is my favorite fast food fried chicken place. KFC has nothing on Jollibee's. I've said this before, and I'll say this again. A good fried chicken should look like your mom's knees after she kneeled down on the carpet floor. Specific? Well, ask your mom. I can't. I can't anymore. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to violate your mother like that. Or did I? So let's look at the components that we've gotten handed. Very interesting choice of cuts that we were giving. So this is the breast, which is the coveted part for many Caucasian people. I also like a good breast from time to time, but for fried chicken, it definitely runs the danger of drying out. So let's see how well they cooked it. And this one is the top breast part. A uh, little less in meat, but we got a lot more meat on the breast, so it evens out. And these are the plain, original Chicken Joy specials. Next, we have their new spicy chicken, and I love the little moon landing flags they put on top of it. I feel like Neil Armstrong walking moon for the first time, except instead of craters, it's fried chicken. I'm gonna massacre this chicken. Like massacre, but NASA. Too far, too far. And for the other piece, we have the top part of the breast as well as the wings attached to it. I'm assuming that's because the thigh pieces are used to be a combo piece for the rice or for the chicken sandwich because they are the juicier part and it's more even. You know, it's easier to bite into. These parts are gonna be harder to use. So I'm assuming that's the reason why they use these uh, top ladder parts. I'm gonna try the breast piece first and just as is without the sauce because I like titties. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. It's salty, it's crunchy, and the brine for the chicken is just right. I'm gonna take one more bite. The breast is super juicy and it just 
falls right apart when you bite into it. It's cooked so perfectly and when I put it into my mouth, that salty, chickeny juices just completely overwhelm it. It's very well cooked, but it is more on the cooked side because if the chicken is too juicy and it has too many juices, the fry isn't going to hold up. So very, very smart on Jollibee's to cook the chicken on the more further end. And another reason is because of this boy. So when you order the four piece, you get a cup of gravy, actually two cups of gravy. And a classic Chicken Joy combo is not complete without dipping the chicken in the gravy. Wow. Look at that, it's just dripping. And the consistency of the gravy looks fantastic. It's somewhere in between that thick and thin. It's thick enough where it has that like nice gloss, but also thin enough so that it coats the chicken and uh, spreads like your mom's legs. Okay, I'm a food YouTuber. I gotta make these types of innuendos, okay? How am I supposed to survive in this space without making those kinds of jokes when there's people like this? Cut me some slack. I love your mother, seriously. Maybe a little too much. My lord, perfect. It really is the perfect combo. Chicken joy without the gravy is like a Filipino without their rice. It's that special and it's that important. It's an integral part of the Jollibee experience. Wow, that gravy is so good. I'm gonna just have the gravy on its own. Mmm. It's a really nice chicken broth base, as well as some black pepper. And the roux for it is really, really well made. This gravy has been sitting for about 10 minutes or so. Even though it's still cold, it still has that nice consistency. And this is a breakthrough. You know, this deserves a Nobel scientific prize. Chicken, I'm giving it a great 8.3 out of 10. And the gravy, I'm giving it a high 9 out of 10. I really like the gravy. And the two together is gonna be an 8.7 out of 10. High points, high points and big shoes to fill for a a lot of fried chicken chains out there. Now I'm going to try the spicy fried chicken. And look at that. The color on this is like me after two days in Philippines. You wanna see something nasty? I am melanin deficient. I cannot handle the sun. But the color on this chicken is just like me. It's a little red, it's golden, it's crispy, and the skin looks like it's about to fall apart. And it has like almost like a Dorito-like color. And this looks so appetizing. And I can just feel from just holding it how crispy this is. I'm gonna have the wing for this one. Woo, so crispy. That is spicy. It has the same spice as bird's eye chili. Packs a punch, it's peppery, it's strong and spicy, just like a Korean wife. Okay, now I'm gonna have it with the gravy. Hopefully that kind of like mellows out some of the spice. Damn, damn. Let's give this a try. <laughs> the gravy with the spicy fried chicken. Even though I dipped the chicken skin in the gravy, the crispiness still holds up. Wow, that is amazing. I'm giving the spicy chicken wing a solid 8 out of 10. And with the gravy, an 8.3. Because I'm a masochist and I love pain. Okay, I'm gonna just calm down my palate with a little bit of the iced tea. This is their sweetened Lipton iced tea. Standard. I'm giving their iced tea a 6 out of 10. Nothing that special. I, I was expecting a little bit more of like a acidic note because a lot of Filipino food is acidic, but it's aight. It's nothing to toot about. I'm gonna try the Coke float next. Coke float is something that I've been seeing in the Philippines often. Like they even have it at McDonald's. I did a McDonald's short, so I know. I am a big fan of cream soda because I like it a little fizzy and a little creamy. The combination of cream and soda, I know it sounds weird for people who've never tried it before, but it works and it's really good because it's like two of the most unhealthy things just mashed together. Okay, I'm just mixing it up so that all that dairy is mixed in with the Coke. And this is what I'm gonna be letting out in um, 24 hours. I know, sorry, this is a food show. Whoa. The combination between the chocolate syrup, the dairy, and the Coke makes it almost taste like root beer in a weird way. I'm a fan. It's like if you had a bite of chocolate with Dr. Pepper. That's good, I like it. Okay. I'm gonna do a little fry. I'm gonna dip it into the gravy. Mmm, very good. 
less salty than uh, McDonald's fries, but still very good. It's also the little on the thicker end of fries. I'm gonna dip it in the ketchup. I wonder if this is banana ketchup. Banana ketchup is very popular around the Philippines, so basically using banana as a sweetener instead of more sugar. Oh, I do think this is banana ketchup. Banana ketchup is usually a little sweeter and more fruitier than a ketchup that you would find in the US, and it's nice. Seven out of 10, which is like good, but nothing to be like whoa about like the chicken. Chicken here is just so good. Okay, we are going to try something that I've never tasted outside of Philippines, which is the tuna pies. So this is one of the menu items that are not available outside of Philippines. I'm a little excited, but also scared at the same time. <laughs> I think the blue line on this is so crazy. I guess they were trying to like mimic like a bluefin tuna and also a good way to show that this is the tuna pie instead of you know a mango peach pie or an ube pie because if you bit into one of these thinking that it was a dessert, I don't think you would be having a great day. So better be sure than be not sure. So you can get this in two flavors, the original and spicy, but I got it in original because I wanted to taste what it was like in the true essence of it. Okay, let's break this bad boy apart. Creamy. Very creamy, very tuna-y. It seems to be a roux-based filling inside. There's a bit of onions and carrots and tuna. It's like a tuna casserole inside a puff pastry. I've never, ever, ever had tuna in a fast food setting before, so I'm definitely a little scared, but life is all about trying. Let's leave it at that. Not my favorite. Okay, I need a palate cleanser and let's move on to something that I know for a fact that I love. Filipino spaghetti. If you've never heard of Filipino spaghetti before, it's a sweetened version of spaghetti and you make it with ketchup, some sausages, mozzarella, that's it. Folks. You can think of it as your regular Chef Boyardee, but with sugar. And the thing that makes it sweet is the banana ketchup. It's the same ketchup that we got on the side. You have these little sausages as well. If you've never tried it, I know it sounds weird, but I personally love it. It also tastes similarly to the Japanese Napolitan, which is also made with ketchup. To be honest, one of the best ragu sauces that I've made almost always had ketchup. That's a cook secret. You know what I mean? Mmm, wait, their spaghetti tastes different from the international branches. It's much more meatier, actually. Like the international ones, it's not chunky, it's more like thinned out, but this one is chunky. Let me have one of the wainers as well. It's a great compliment to the sweet spaghetti, and honestly, Chef Boyardee would cry over this. This, I'm giving it a great 8.9 out of 10. Okay, now I'm gonna try the hamburger steak. It really does feel super fancy to dine in at Jolly Bee's because you get like proper cutlery and plates. It's not like all uh, cardboard disposable wrappings. I feel so fancy. I'm gonna tuck in a little napkin. Oops. If I may. Let's eat like a lady. Uh. So this is the burger steak, the gravy on top, and a little bit of mushroom. I'm gonna get a little bit of everything. Because here in the Philippines, everything comes with rice. We're gonna have it with a little bit of rice. Just like that. Let's give it a try. I actually really like their patty. You already know that I love the gravy so much here. So it works really well. And the char on the burger patties are really nice. So it has a nice smoky and creaminess from the gravy. And the mushrooms aren't half bad either. Like I thought they were gonna be kind of nasty because like mushrooms in the fast food joint, eh. But it's a cremini mushroom, the same kind that you would have in a cream of mushroom soup. Pretty good. I love the fact that the fast food chain of Philippines 
serves so much rice. It's actually like a proper meal. It doesn't feel like fast food and like junk food. I could totally see myself if I was like working around the area, if I wanted something quick and easy with a good source of healthy carbs to just come in here and grab a quick bite. Mushroom steak, it looked a little bit freakish at first, but I'm giving this also 8.3 out of 10. Hi, high scores today. High scores, it's a good day. It's a good day today. Yeah, I'm gonna just take this off because it's like flying everywhere with the AC. Now this is their chicken joy meal set. And what's interesting about this one is that the rice comes packed. I've never seen rice packed in like a burger wrapping before, but honestly very, very smart because after some time, my rice on the mushroom steak one got a little dry, but this one ensures that all the moisture is going to be held inside by this wrapping paper. And uh, it's a very good way to ensure that the rice is warm as well. But it's very hot in the Philippines, so you want maximum AC see inside the store and it looks like this look how cute that is like a little baby butt underneath a diaper a baby don't know his ABCs okay I'm gonna dump this now there we go okay I'm gonna drizzle some of the gravy oh yeah yeah baby pour it all over oh yeah I was having a moment sorry just break this bad boy oh yeah demolish me and look how juicy this chicken is. Holy smokes. Glossy, glistening. Wow, perfectly cooked chicken. Perfect cook. I'm gonna take a bite. A little bit of rice. Symphony in my mouth. Symphony. I think this is one of my favorite things. One of the best bites of fast food I've ever gotten in my life. I'm just gonna tell you the rating straight away. This one is a solid, solid 9.6 out of 10. It's juicy, it's moist. It's the thigh piece also, so all the juiciness and the fattiness is intact. The crispiness of the chicken is amazing, and especially the chicken skin on top, it just like shatters in my mouth. So you get that like warm, juicy, comforting chicken thigh, and then the crispy skin on top. My God, thick thighs never lies. And with that gravy, wow, and the rice, the combination is everything that I love. And I love how moist the rice is also. If there's one thing that you could try at Jolly Bees, this is going to be it. Rice, chicken, gravy, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Wow, I need to eat that one more time for research purposes, I swear. It is actually so good. I wish they had this in Korea. Moving on to their hidden menu item. Okay. So this is the Pansik Palabok and this is a hidden menu item that's not on the menu at Jolly Bees. It's only for the people that know that know. Pansi palabok is a traditional Filipino dish that consists of pork and shrimp paste and this red color comes from annatto seed powder. So annatto seed is a red colored seed and it's used to make food look more appetizing. It's also the coloring agent for a lot of popular Filipino street foods like kwe kwe, which is a fried quail eggs. You'll see in the next video, I have a very comprehensive Filipino street food video coming out next week. And the toppings are pork in two different ways. So this is grilled pork with a little bit of garlic on top. And on the bottom, this powder that you see is chicharron powder. So chicharron is deep fried pork fat pulverized into this beautiful crumble to add that nice bit of crunch as well as some indulgent fattiness. Along with the shrimp and the pork, it's really the combination of sea and land that comes together in this dish. It's the Filipino version of surf and turf with a hard boiled egg on the side. And this almost like mini lime, baby lime that you see on the side is called calamansi. It is the citrus fruit of the Philippines. It is going to be the best citrus that you'll ever taste. It's my favorite citrus on earth. It tastes like a mix of lime and yuzu. It has a nice bit of sweetness and also of sharp acidity. It's something that's also only grown here in Southeast Asia, so that makes it even more special. I'm gonna squeeze the calamansi on top. And the reason why they make an incision on the top, like a little bowl cut, is because you want to hold the calamansi like this and squeeze it. This is to ensure that the seed doesn't come out, but don't hold it like I'm doing. I'm 
clearly not doing something right. Oh, okay, never mind. You know, it's supposed to be like that. Don't follow me. These ones are quite seedy, so just be careful when you're squeezing. Let's mix this bad boy up. Honestly, the shrimp on this looks really, really well cooked. It's like nice and pinky and juicy looking. Whoa. The sauce has a really nice consistency. As you start mixing, it kind of like loosens together all the noodles and it coats every layer really, really well. You get a little bit of that chicharron powder, a bit of pork. I'm gonna have it with some of the shrimp as well, like this and a hard-boiled egg. Also, the first time I've had a hard-boiled egg at a fast food restaurant. A lot of firsts today. And the egg is actually perfectly cooked too. A good indication of a well-cooked egg is not having the blue ring. When egg is overcooked, it has that like bluish gray ring and it makes it like super eggy. But this is incredibly well-cooked. Wait, what the heck? This is actually so good. It's like, Actually comparable to restaurant quality. Like if they served me this at a restaurant, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. That shrimp paste has a really, really nice aroma. A lot of umami kicking in. And with the crunchy chicharron powdered pork, it's so indulgent and good. This really is the Filipino surf and turf. And that grilled pork along with the soft boiled egg and the shrimp that kind of explodes in your mouth, this is actually really good. And I never thought that I would have a noodle dish that's so executed well in a fast food chain. And it's actually really impressive how the noodles didn't clump together and just become like one big goo. It falls apart and the consistency along with the chicharron powder is excellent. Or egg-cellent, get it? Excellent. I'm gonna give this a 7.8 out of 10, but because it's not on the menu and it's a secret menu item and it makes me feel special, I'm gonna give it a bonus 0.5, making it 8.3 out of 10. It's that secret factor, that exclusivity factor that makes it the Soho Club of fast food. Now that we're done with the savory, let's move on to my favorite part, which is going to be Dessert. I'm on my way to go get dessert. You know, you should be proud of the fact that I didn't make more bee jokes because it would have been unbearable. Oh God, I'll stop, I'll stop, I swear. The dessert option. Wow, the dessert option that they have in the Philippines Jollibee is so much more than the ones that are outside of the Philippines. When I went to London, they ran out of the ube pie and I was so sad. But here, they have so many wild options. It's crazy. Hello! Can I get one peach mango pie, one ube cheese pie, and one buko pandan sundae? Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, so Thank much. you. We got our dessert. Let's go upstairs. If you like this video, go consider checking out dubimart.com to support us and get this cool OG kimchi t shirt. We're at our final destination and this is the pandan sundae. Pandan is a type of plant, it's a leaf that's green and that's why it gets this like bright green color. You can think of it almost as the matcha of Southeast Asia. It's very popular to put in dessert like halo halo, which is very popular in the Philippines. It's like a mixed compote kind of dessert, which you'll see in the street food video next week, so subscribe. And this kind of looks like a halo halo, but in a sundae form. So this is the buko pandan sundae. Day. And buko, for those who don't know, is coconut. So the jelly that you see, the translucent jelly, that is coconut jelly. And coconut jelly is my favorite part of any fruits cocktail. There's only like a couple of them when you open the canned fruits. And I would pick out all the uh, coconut ones because I was the only child and I could do whatever I want, which is why I am probably a YouTuber. Only child energy forever. Wow, it looks so beautiful and I love the different layers of it. The soft ice cream looks super silky and soft and the pandan is like a nice little like jelly-like consistency. The thing that I think Philippines does so, so well is dessert. To be honest, I think it's the country with the best dessert in Asia. And one of the big reasons is because of coconut and pandan and ube. Like if you think about your favorite desserts, Philippines has it all.
I love the jellied coconut. It has like a nice like jelly-like texture and a nice bit of coconut. And there's also a little bit of coconut flakes in the sundae as well. But there is that like slight bit of like almost rose water, grassy notes to it that really gives it a nice like slight fragrance note at the very end. This is the best dessert. Beats chocolate sundae, beats any dessert I've ever had. And this is like the summertime dessert to have. And I love the fact that it's like a limited special. Anything with coconut in a dessert is like an immediate, immediate 10 on my books. I think I'm gonna give an unprecedented score. I'm giving it an 11 out of 10. We popped the scale, doobies. We popped the scale. This is insanely good. Holy. Dude, you actually have to try this. This is so good. Peach mango pie. This is one of my favorite desserts on earth. Like favorite, favorite desserts. I love it already. But why is it half the size of the one outside of Philippines? Usually it's like this big. Hmm. But honestly, I'm not opposed to the fact that it's smaller. I feel like it gives me room to try out different flavors. So honestly, I like it. It's like a mini peach mango, but maybe this is like the standard peach mango pie that people know in the Philippines. It really looks like a small hot pocket, it's cute. And the crust on these is just insane, insane. It's the same crust as the one as the tuna pie. It's a puff pastry and it's very similar to like a wonton wrapper. It's thick, it gets really bubbly and it just has these like nice golden blister marks. Like look at it, like, like hear it. Nice and crusty, like your foot. Okay, I'm gonna break this bad boy apart. Oh. I just know it's gonna be good. It smells fantastic. It's so good. I love McDonald's apple pie, but Jolly Bee's peach mango pie is something different, different, different. I'm getting aggressive because I'm getting so emotional right now. I love Jollibee's chicken, but Jollibee's desserts, I will hurt somebody to get to. And this is not a threat, it's a fact. The peach mango filling, it's peachy, it's acidic, it's sweet, it's warm, it's hot. I love mango and I love peaches. And the combination of the two, like if you just had mango, it's gonna be overly sweet. But the peaches add a nice like fruity punch to it. You know what I mean? It's like the perfect bit of acidity and sweetness mashed into one. And with that crispy pie filling that just shatters in your mouth, oh, it's so good. God damn it, why do they not have this in Korea? Jolly Bees, if you're watching this video, please come to Korea. Here's a Korean heart for you. Or use me as an ambassador, that's even better. If you're expanding to Korea, you know who to hit up. Okay, so this one is the ube cheese pie. I've had the ube pie before, but never with cheese. Using cheese in desserts is also a very Filipino thing. Cheese is a really great way to utilize in desserts because it gives it that like nice salty dairiness. It kind of balances out the overly sweet notes and like gives it that nice savory yet sweet. So like best of both worlds feeling, if you know what I'm meaning. And cheese is also a very popular ingredient to use in the Philippines due to its history. There was American intervention in Philippines. So it's very intertied with when the US military was here back in the days. Okay, enough about history. Let's break into this bad boy. Whoa, the color on this is so ooey and gooey. Wow, holy smokes. This looks so good. Look at that. Oh my God, it smells amazing. There's like this like funky cheesiness as well as like the ube. And ube is a purple yam that's very popular in the Philippines because it's purple and it's pretty and it has that like custardy note to it. It's like sweet potato pie or like pumpkin pie, similar taste to it if you've never tried ube before. If you've never tried it, I really urge you to go to the closest Asian grocery store and try it. It's really, really good. Let's give this a bite. Wow, that's very indulgent. The peach mango pie is more like fresh and fruity, but indulgent. This is just very indulgent. The creaminess and the custard flavor coming from the ube and the very sharp cheesy note from the cheese is very, very creamy and heavy. I think it's also because I'm pretty full because I ate so much, but it's a little bit overwhelming for me. I've had the ube pie before. 
and it was like my favorite dessert of all times. I love desserts that are more custardy and rich in flavor, especially when it's cold. But this is like a little bit of bias coming from the weather. It's so hot outside that this isn't exactly the dessert that I'm looking for just yet. But if this was eaten during the winter, it's all like nine out of 10. Like it's so, so good. But right now for me, I'm gonna be it an 8.8 .8 out of 10. Like Jollibee's really got their desserts nailed. And even for like the newer flavors that are more like experimental, they know what they're doing. Like Philippines, the dessert game here is just insane. Let's try. This one's also really good. Super indulgent. Ah, what an experience to try Jollibee's in the true motherland. It was better than I expected. The desserts were phenomenal, especially the buko pandan sundae. If you've never tried it before, you need to try it. That coconut jelly still lingers in my brain. Oh, that was amazing. And the gravy too, Jollibee's. The whole experience was also so nice. Like the hospitality of the service workers here and the manager here, special thanks to this Jollibee's location located near the capital. I'm gonna link it in the description box. Thank you so much for watching and uh, see you next time, Jollies. Oh, I mean, doobies. Bye-bye.